Some people have asked me how I generate data from my thrust stand video. So today I'm going to show you how to use this bathroom scale, enter that data into a free spreadsheet from Rogue Rocket Science. Thank you, Alex, for that. And a special edition of VLC Media Software. Okay, let's take a look at those tools and get started. If you enjoy the content from this channel, please consider buying me a coffee. Go down to the link below, click on buy me a coffee. You can buy me one coffee or two, or buy me the whole pot. Keep me up all night making videos. Thanks, I appreciate that. The first thing we need to do is head on over to Rogue Rocket Science and download the spreadsheet that we need to enter the data in. So check his site out, it's really cool. He also offers a nozzleless motor in, yeah, we know it's uh, dangerous. A nozzleless motor in 24 millimeter and 54 millimeter sizes. Uh, really cool way to go. It doesn't require a nozzle. Just put the fuel in it and put the coring tool in it. Pull the coring tool and the fuel is set and you're ready to go. And then when you're done, you just rinse the motor out. What I want to look at today is at the resource center, we can find the calculator. But before I go there, on the learning center, there's a video tutorial that uh, Alex did on pretty much similar to the same thing I'm doing, only I'm using a little bit different technique. But if you want to check out his video, it's really good. You can stop by here and check it out. That's roguerocketscience.com uh, in the video section. So let's head on over to the resource and check out the free calculators. There are several of them listed, but the one that we're looking at today is the Thrust Stand Data Analyzer. And go ahead and click the download button and that will download it to your computer. Now, if you have Office or something like that, then you can open up the spreadsheet in Excel. If you don't have Office, you can also use OpenOffice, uh, a free software that's easy to use and you can download that. It's open source. Or uh, what I like to do is just upload that to my Google's folders. So I'm going to upload it to Google Docs and you can actually open it and uh, edit the information in it right from there. And then everything stays right there. You can also view it from a tablet, phone, another computer, something like that. So it makes it really easy to keep everything all in one spot. And that's how I'm going to do that today. So in the next screen, I'm going to show you where I've downloaded the um, spreadsheet and open a Google Docs. We'll stop there next. If you click on the link and it doesn't download the spreadsheet, then what you need to do is go ahead and download it here. If you try to edit it from here, you can't edit it. So I went ahead and downloaded it. And then you can either edit on your local computer or upload the file to Google Drive. And that's what I'm going to do where I can edit it. To play the data back, we need a special version of VLC Media Player. The latest version only goes about 8 frames and then it stops. So I have found a special version that you can download. It's open source. Anybody can modify it if they like. And with this one, you can advance one frame at a time and you can scrub backwards. Now I've tried several video players and this one works the best. So just start with this one and you won't be disappointed. Download that VLC media player and go ahead and install it and then we'll look at it what it takes to enter the data from there. I've opened up VLC media player and then I've dragged my file into the video player and we can take a look at how this works. So you can start by pressing the space bar and it will play. You can also just start by the regular play button here. Touch the space bar and it'll stop. And then you can drag or scrub until you find the thrust where it starts. And right in here somewhere. Okay, I can see the needle moving. So I'm going to back up to about where it starts right there. And then I'm going to hit the E key and advance one frame at a time. And as I advance to each frame, I want to take a sheet of paper and write down those numbers in order. And then we'll take those numbers, that data, and enter it into our spreadsheet. And then we'll have all the information we need. So let's do that next. I'll show you how that works. The first uh, little bump there is maybe the igniter and it starts uh, around 10 pounds. You could just start at five pounds and then go to 10 pounds the next. The next one is 40 pounds. This motor is really lighting up quickly and coming up to pressure quickly. This is flexi fuel. The next number is uh, around 50 and you just keep going and recording it on your paper and this one hits up to 100 
and then it comes back down. Record each stop as you go, and then again, when you get to around five pounds, that's when you're going to stop the data entry. Then take all those numbers, put them in your spreadsheet, and then we'll come back and take a look at that. I've uploaded the file to Google Drive, and now I can open it and edit it. I've entered 30 because that's the amount of frames per second that I'm using on my phone. You can use 30 or 60. Uh, I prefer 30. It gives you plenty of data. You can use 60, but then you're going to enter a lot of data into the form. So it's your choice, whatever you want to do. So after I've entered the uh, sample rate, which is 30, the propellant mass is in pounds. Now I usually mix mine in grams, so you might have to do a little conversion there. Just make sure you enter pounds in there and uh, then you'll be all set. So after you enter the amount of weight, then we start entering the data from the dial. And I always start with zero, that's already filled in. And then you're gonna enter the amount of thrust in this area here. So I usually start with uh, somewhere around five pounds of thrust. That way I know the motor is burning and, and running. Uh, anything else is, it's like uh, bring, coming up to pressure and I don't really wanna measure that. So somewhere around four, five, six pounds, that's where I start entering the data. We'll pull up uh, some data and start entering it here. The last data entry is located at the end of the column. Other than zero, it is five. And next to the five, we can see the burn time, which is 1.1 is listed. After we determine the burn time, scroll back up and enter it here. After that's entered, we can see a graph, but it extends too far. So the last thing that we have to do is delete all the cells below zero. I'll show you how to do that. I've scrolled all the way to the bottom, and now that they're selected, what I want to do is, in this open area right here, right click, and then choose Delete Rows. Uh, in this case, it's 49 to 654. Whatever it says in there, you want to delete all the rows. Make sure you choose this one. Now, all the columns and all the rows are deleted up to the bottom of our document. There. So we end with zero, and let's scroll up. And there we go, there's our graph. And after all that's entered, then you end up with the data uh, thrust versus time. And also, on the other side is some more information. And the total impulse in pound seconds and newton seconds is listed. The burn time is 1.1, which is really good for a 38 millimeter motor burning flexi fuel or any kind of sugar fuel. And the total specific impulse of the motor is also listed. I'll scroll down a little bit, and the next graph is thrust versus time in newton seconds. So if that's your language, you can go ahead and check that out there. But this works great. Uh, it's just pretty amazing. Thank you, Alex, for the spreadsheet. Enter your information there and download it to your local computer and you'll have it in two places. And you can use this to design your own motor. If the thrust time is a little bit too long, if it's uh, one and a half seconds or even two seconds, you know that you have some work to do to get that thrust time back down to around 1.1 second. It seems to work really well. Also, if you make any changes in the fuel, some of them are non-standard that I do, like add aluminum powder or magnesium powder, then you can track it with this and get uh, actual good data that you can't get anywhere else. So the thr thrust stand is not that hard to build. I'll put a link in the description to the video. And so that, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a like, hit that subscribe button, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.